Okay, so you've committed to being a DM, but now that you are one, what do you have to keep track of? What's more important to take note on than other things? Like, what do you need to remember for future sessions? Don't worry, I got you. So this video is gonna go over all the things that I feel like as a DM, I try to keep track of, both before session time, so for my session prep period, as well as during the session, which is much smaller, and then after session, which is also pretty big. Let's just dive right in. You can jump to whichever section you want. I'll put it on the, the thingy. First, of course, we need to talk about your tools. Now, I don't care what you use. I sell a very beautiful handmade journal that you could buy, but I don't care. You can use whatever you want. OneNote, people take notes right in Foundry, people use Notion. There's all sorts of things out there that can help you to keep track of notes. I, for one, am a handwritten girl, so I like to use my physical notebook. You could use just a plain piece of paper. I don't care do what you want. Just make it so that it's easy for you to keep everything together and easily access those things. So let's talk about pre-session note taking. This stuff is going to be either help with preparing your adventure or the world building, that kind of thing. This will be split into three categories. You have your timeline notes, your NPC notes, and then of course your world building notes, which can get super extensive, especially if you're me. I think more importantly, if you do none of these other ones, is to do your timeline notes. And what do I mean by that? So you need to have a timeline of just generally the events that you think will happen throughout the adventure. Now this isn't going to be an exact science because as your players are interacting with the world, things are going to change. That's inevitable. However, knowing kind of what the end goal is and you know where the starting point is and any major events throughout the adventure will help you plan your sessions accordingly. Timelines are also really good for keeping track of things like when your player's long rested, which I have a horrible time at keeping track of, or when your players visit a town or the seasons things like that that you need to keep track of if it's a long-standing campaign. I'm horrible <laughs> at day and timekeeping. I have tried to at least note in general like how long it takes to travel between towns. I have a general sense of that and I think that's good enough unless something is super time sensitive or you're doing some sort of campaign where you, there's time travel, which I've always wanted to do. But this is also a great way to plan out events. In particular, I, I was playing or running Quarter of the Dragon Queen and there's like a whole bunch of time between traveling from here and following the cult up north and it's like three or four months of travel time. So to make things move a little faster, I did have like road events and I would do it like every couple weeks. So I did have to keep track of time a little bit there, but there was also like important events, was important to the story and adventure module that I had to make sure we hit on the road. So that really helped me plan out certain things. Now, it was still a little bit random because my players had to roll for certain events. Having a general sense of when the more important ones had to happen was super helpful in a timeline format. Next, let's talk about your NPC note. You don't need to write down every NPC. I know that I have a group of players who literally talks to everyone under the sun, and then you have to make up names and stuff on the fly. Sure, jot those down in the session notes somewhere, but unless there's someone that they're going to encounter multiple times, it's really not important to have a whole fleshed out NPC just for them to pull one time. That said, if you feel like they will encounter someone, you should probably flesh them out well enough and that's where this like NPC part comes into play. Obviously I have a journal where I've got everything kind of prompted so you can, well, so I don't have to look it up to make a convincing character or a different character. Some things to keep in mind are just their basic description because I always forget what they look like. You want to describe them in a similar fashion every time they meet them. You might want to include their affiliation. Maybe they work for the town guard. Maybe they're a political figure. Maybe they're just some Joe Schmo off the street, but they know all the rumors in town. You know, write down how they're connected to the story and why they're kind of important. And then you might want to build them like you would a player character. You should give them some flaws, some 
bonds, something that they're motivated to do, even if it's just one or two lines, this kind of makes your characters more well-rounded and makes them more believable. This also will help you roleplay them later. So if you write a good enough description and you know, give them enough bonds and that flaws, it'll help you get into character when they run into that person again because you can read it real fast, remember what you had originally envisioned for this character and then just hop right into the roleplay seat pretty easily. Since I'm no Matt Mercer or voice actor, I have to do that and write down their flaws and those kinds of things so that I can remember how to describe them to my players. Because I can't do voices, but I can surely say, oh, in a very deep guttural voice, he says, that kind of thing. So it does help if you have those notes somewhere. And then finally for pre-session notes is obviously all the world building stuff if you are building your own world. Again, I have a journal that like helps me make sure I have all of the different aspects of a town or a region fleshed out as well as like a shop, that kind of stuff. You don't need a fancy journal to take notes on what you're envisioning. You just wanna make sure you're hitting some key points. And in particular, you wanna make sure you have a place to put all that information so that you can reference it later and then you can stay consistent throughout the campaign. So even when I was running Horde of the Dragon Queen, I was using one of these journals so that I could keep notes on things that I looked up for, you know, Baldur's Gate or for Neverwinter so that I could convey these things to the players in a way that was consistent throughout the campaign. Especially since Horde of the Dragon Queen was my first time DMing and I knew about the world of D&D to an extent from like video games, but I didn't know exactly the feel and all of the different aspects of each town. And there was one point in Horde of the Dragon Queen where they passed through Baldur's Gate. The Horde of the Dragon Queen gives you this much, like one paragraph of information on Baldur's Gate. I played Played Baldur's Gate, you know, one and two, I was like, we need more information here. What, what else could we do? So having a place to keep even that stuff that's not your homebrew world, even if it's something in the Forgotten Realms, it's important to have that all in one area so you can easily reference it and come back to it if you need. Let's talk about individual session notes, um, but it's still going to be split up into like pre-session, so preparing for your session and then stuff you take during the session and then stuff you take after the session. The first thing I normally do is write a recap. However, the recap comes from last session's summary. So this is kind of first and last. It's whatever three sentences that I wrote at the end of last session just rephrased to help trigger memories from last session. I tend to start sessions by giving a brief synopsis of what happened last time. I also like to ask players like what they remember from last session or from the last few sessions because that also helps one get them thinking. It's not just them listening to me talk at them, but it's also them actually trying to remember what happened last session as well as it gives me a hint as to what they felt was important from last session, which we can also talk about at the end. In particular though, this recap has to highlight things that I don't want my players to forget. So especially if you're doing something like a little murder mystery kind of thing, like um, I did a one shot recently that was a murder mystery. I would recap their interactions with some of the NPCs. I wouldn't go through all the details because if they forgot, that's on them. But I would recap a little bit just to kind of jog their memory as to that interaction with that NPC. My other pre-session planning tends to be what I think is going to happen this session based on what happened last session and based on my timeline from just generally knowing the adventure module or my homebrew. In my notebooks, I actually have a whole section for this. It's based off of the Lazy Dungeon Masters or Return to, of the Lazy Dungeon Master or whatever, that book. I'll put a picture, but I'll put a link in the description below so you guys can find it if you would like. Essentially, it narrows down session prep so that you're only prepping for like a short amount of time. Now I still prep for a long amount of time, but mostly because I'm prepping multiple sessions in one go. So I kind of know where we're going to be and I can figure out stopping points depending on how long encounters are 
take or how long NPC interactions take. I'm Most of the time I'm prepping multiple sessions at one time. That said, my notebooks actually have sections for this, but you want to focus on these key things. I have a section for clues. So this would be anything that you think would lead to the big bad guy at the end of the campaign or whatever quest line they're in or anything. I write down a brief note on what I need them to figure out this session. Next, I jot down important NPC names. So just a brief name or two, maybe I might put a word or two that describes that person. So I'm not flipping back and forth when they come up or I have, because my notebooks, all the pages come out, I remove that page in particular and set it right next to my session notes so that I have it at, at a quick glance and know exactly who I'm looking for. The other thing I plan out is encounters. Now, sometimes you can't always plan every encounter out, but if if you know that there's like a roll table with different monsters, I would probably write those monsters down or and the page numbers just so that I can easily flip to it in the book. Or I make, sometimes I make index cards if it's a lot of different monsters. I also have just a sheet with different monster stats in my notebook. So I'll prep that, pull it out as well, put it next to the stack with my NPCs. And then I just know that everything is all together and it's within reach and I don't have to go flipping and figuring things out and make my players wait too long. So once you get the session prep down, then there's the actual note taking during the session. I'll have a whole video, which I just recorded before this. I'll put it here with how to go about taking those notes. And I think that kind of summarizes exactly what I do in like session note taking. But the key thing is to keep it short, make it super easy to access something to write notes down and just to keep everything bullet pointed. And it's 100%, it's 100% okay if they almost seem cryptic because you're just writing down nouns and verbs. Uh, in fact, that's probably for the best because you don't have a lot of time during session to write notes. And this is why I feel like that other video might help you. I know for me in particular, I can only jot down like one or two words at a time. That's all I have time to write down while I'm in the middle of the session. So that's why this section of session note taking is so short because it is, it's pretty hard to take notes and DM at the same time. However, the thing that I am pretty good at is taking notes at the end of session. So the notes at the end of the session tend to either go through those cryptic bullet points and extrapolate and make those make sense for me to read later. Always trying to answer the question, am I gonna forget this? <laughs> and going back through this, like everything that happened that session and writing down things I feel like I might forget later. And that's also talked about in that video. Some other notes that you should be taking, which you can do during if you remember, but at the very least you should write these down at the end of your session somewhere are things like downtime activities. So anytime your players like try to work on a skill. I had one player who wanted to work on wood carving and every time she had downtime, she was trying to carve some little face or whatever. And I was trying to keep track of that so that I could tell her like how she was improving over time. That kind of activity is something that you need to keep track of. Same with maybe interactions with you know a horse or a familiar. You know, how is that relationship growing over time? Well, if you don't write down how many times they've interacted with the horse or whatever, it's gonna be hard for you to judge or accurately depict what their standing is with that creature. Finally, a thing that I always forget to do, but is incredibly useful is to have one long list of just things that your players have done. Let me explain. Anytime that your players interact with the world, something happens. They're influencing the world around them. If you aren't keeping track of what they are doing to influence the world, how can you make them feel like they actually have some influence over the, the environment, right? So you wanna make sure you're writing down things that they've done that maybe can trigger other adventures, trigger interactions, trigger encounters. For instance, if they save a young lad from a quest line, maybe they pass through that town, he remembers them, and the town asks their help for something else along the same vein. Or I had plans 
happens for something in Horde of the Dragon Queen where one of my players had pulled a unicorn to their aid. Long story, but he threw a vial of blood, a wild magic surge happened, a unicorn popped out. And it helped them defeat a pretty bad encounter where they almost died, and it was perfect timing. So, at the end of Horde of the Dragon Queen, spoiler alert, um, there's dragons. If your party's not adequately equipped to face a dragon, do you do? I was kind of saving that unicorn encounter in my back pocket for any moment where it just seemed like perhaps my players were about to TPK so that I could bring that unicorn back in to save the day because unicorns have healing magic and whatever and they had already interacted with this unicorn once and it wouldn't be so outlandish. However, uh, that moment never came. That's one of those things like if if you're keeping a running list of how your players are interacting with the world, you can very easily pull side quests, you can pull all sorts of things. So obviously this does not encompass all the notes that you can take. These are just the ones I feel help me run both my homebrew now, run my one shots, the Pathfinder stuff on here. So I hope that it's helpful for you just to know like what kind of notes some other people are taking. <laughs> These are the things that I definitely record the most often and the things that I also reference the most often. So keep that in mind when you are taking notes that if you're not referencing them, then don't don't take notes on those things because it's just wasting your time and energy to write those notes down. Make sure that what you're writing down you actually reuse or use in the future. Whether that means at the end of the session extrapolating more out of those little bullet points or if this means putting them in a different place so you can reference them later. So what kind of notes do you guys think are important that I didn't mention? Because I'm sure everybody has their own stuff that they like to keep track of and and I know that I'm bad at the timekeeping stuff, so maybe someone can put any comments down there on that kind of thing. Regardless, like I'd love to know what you guys find is important for note-taking that I didn't mention. It might also help another DM. If you're looking for a place to write all these fancy notes down, I have a fancy planner and you can buy one on my website. I don't normally try to squeeze that in anywhere, but right now, it's very applicable to this video. <laughs> Anything that you spend in the shop helps me make more videos as well as helps me pay my sister so that she doesn't have to work a horrible job and she can continue to enjoy this nerdery with me. <laughs> All your support helps, even if it's just sharing that link. If you want to have more of a how-to take notes, I'll put a link for that video. I also have a link that I can put about the player version of this video so that you can send that to your players so they also take notes and then you guys can work together and have the best notes ever. Probably not, but you know, good luck. <laughs>